All right. So get this. Somebody sent in like this crazy <laughs> text, right? About a get this blue toed god. <laughs> And a blue toed god. It's like not just, you know, some random thing on the internet. Mm. This is like a whole story. And it takes place in a frog pond Ooh, of yeah. all places. Yeah. Right. But he- here's the thing this frog pond, it's like connected to CERN. Okay. Which, I mean, you know, that giant particle accelerator in Europe. I, right. Trying to unlock the secrets of the universe. Exactly. Yeah. So we've got like this super weird mix here yeah. of normal, the everyday, and then like the totally out there yeah i mean how do you even what do you even start with i know right and that's why you're here okay to help me unpack this whole blue toed gods situation well it's really interesting how um this text uses humor and like this fantastical element to get us thinking about these really big questions you know it's almost like it's saying hey even something as simple as a frog pond right can be a portal to something much much bigger so, like, walk me through this okay. this whole something bigger. What's the actual story here? So, the text describes this blue-toed god. Okay. And he resides in Frog Pond Number 7, right? Okay. Which seems pretty normal, but, oh, by the way, it's connected to CERN, to this portal. Of course, yeah. And then you've got these dragonflies, right? Yeah. They're from Frog Pond Number 6, the next one over. Okay. And they're like these guardians, protectors of knowledge. Okay. And they are absolutely determined to get through this portal. And this is where it gets really interesting, right? Because yeah. it's not just like a free for all at the portal. Right. It's not a free for all. So what's stopping them? Well, that's where the blue toed god comes in, right? He's like the the bouncer, the guardian. He's protecting this portal. He's not letting these knowledge hungry dragonflies through. No, he is not. So okay, we've got ourselves a showdown. We do. An epic battle, right? Who wins? Well, the text describes this massive clash, reality-bending powers, all of that. and um, Oh, wow. It's a whole thing. But in the end, the blue-toed god, he absorbs the dragonfly queen to save the entire multiverse. Wow. So we're talking, like, really high stakes. High stakes, yeah. The fate of everything. Pretty much. Wow. Okay, so... Obviously, we're dealing with some pretty clear symbolism here, right? Oh, absolutely. Like, let's start with the dragonflies. What do they represent? So dragonflies, they often symbolize change, transformation, right? That kind of thing. Right, okay. But in this story, I mean, their desire to go through that CERN portal, I think it could represent something deeper, something about us, about our anxieties, our concerns about technology, about what we might find. Okay. Like, we're pushing the boundaries all the time with AI, with gene editing. Right, But are we ready for what we might find for the consequences? Right. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah. And the blue-toed god, right? He's holding these dragonflies back. Try and keep them under control. Exactly. And I think he represents the forces that are trying to maintain balance, some kind of control over all of this potential for chaos, you know? It's like he's saying, hold on, not so fast. Right. Let's think about this. And the way the text incorporates these real scientific concepts, like the Higgs boson, quarks, it's almost like... It's trying to make physics fun and engaging. Yeah, yeah. It's like a game, you know? It's like it's trying to make us think about these big ideas in a way that's not intimidating. Exactly. Not intimidating at all. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of being a kid. Yeah. Staring into a pond and just imagining all the stuff that's hidden beneath the surface, mm-hmm. that sense of wonder, the mystery. Yeah. This story, it just amplifies that feeling. It does. It takes it to a whole other level. Exactly. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. And that's yeah. the power of this kind of storytelling. I think it's disarming. It uses humor. It uses these fantastical elements. It makes you laugh, even if the topic is like kind of scary in a way. Exactly. Yeah, it makes Mm -hmm. it easier to engage with these big, sometimes even frightening ideas. So, okay, for all the listeners out there who are, you know, maybe scrolling online and they stumble upon something like this. Right. Something strange, something funny, something that makes them think. What's the takeaway here? I think it's a good reminder that there's always more than meets the eye, mm-hmm. even in something that seems, you know, silly or strange on the surface. There could be these hidden depths. Oh, for sure. So dive in, you know, ask questions, embrace that unknown with a sense of curiosity. Don't be afraid to explore those weird corners of the Internet. Exactly. You never know what you might find.
You never know what you might find. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Well, on that note, I think we're going to wrap things up here. Sounds good. Thanks so much for uh, for helping me unpack all of this this blue toad god business. Yeah, of course. Anytime. And uh, to everyone listening, thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time. See you later. Bye. Oh. Okay, so um, today we're taking a look at, well, this is interesting, your research on Frog pond number seven. And, and I got to say, these notes are something else. You've got like actual field observations. Let me see. Is that a frog pond.txt file? It is. Okay. Okay. But then, and this is what really got me, you've got this whole, I don't even know, like this story about a blue toad with a portal. It's like science and fantasy had a baby in your notebook. I see where you're going with this. Right. I mean, on one hand, you're meticulously documenting the frog pond ecosystem, and then, bam, magical blue toad. Like, how did we get here? So so what's the deal? Well, you know, it's not every day we see field notes take such a, a fantastical turn. Yeah. But I think that's what makes this so interesting, don't you? I mean, instead of just dismissing the unexpected, we should approach it with a sense of curiosity. Yeah, no, totally. Curiosity is, is kind of our thing, right? Exactly. So, so maybe, just maybe. This narrative, this story about the blue toad, is actually trying to make sense of something, like, like a way to grasp the the complex relationships happening in the frog pond ecosystem. Ecology meets fantasy. I and, like that. And and you really dive into it. I mean, there's a line in here. Hold on. Okay, yeah. You wrote the blue toad perched on a lily pad, surveyed his domain, his sapphire skin shimmering under the moonlight. I mean, first of all, your imagery is on point. Thank you. But it, it also made me think about how important toads really are in, in these ecosystems. Like, they keep everything balanced, right? Oh, absolutely. Toads, much like your blue guardian, often sit atop the food chain in these delicate environments, and they play a vital role in keeping those insect populations in check. Super efficient, actually. Which, speaking of insects, you didn't just throw any bugs into this story. You've got fireflies, ants, dragonflies, all following the blue toad. And each one, they're like symbols, light, work, messengers. It's very deliberate. So so why these specific insects? Is there like a connection to how these insects actually behave in the real world? It's a great question. Yeah. And what I find particularly fascinating is this idea that they're drawn to the toad, to the blue toad, seeking knowledge. Like they're looking for a way to pass through this portal this this thirst for understanding for something something beyond it, it resonates with that very human desire to explore to discover you know makes you wonder what would you ask the blue toad if you had the chance okay i like that so so we've got these insects yearning for something more and this wise blue toad as their guide and and maybe even though it's you know a fictional story it it does make you think about our own journeys our own pursuit of of knowledge of discovery so so what speaks to you the most in all of this what's resonating mm. well i think for me it's the idea that sometimes we need to step outside of what's familiar sure to see things in a new light and mm -hmm. and sometimes that takes something unexpected something whimsical like like a blue toad in a portal you know, your story, it reminds us that everything is connected, that there's always more to learn, more to understand about the world around us, both the natural and the, the unknown. And that's exciting. That is exciting. It really makes you wonder what secrets would that blue toad reveal? What would you ask about the portal, about your own journey, anything?